Welcome to another edition of FDR Tech, where today we're actually talking about some old radio gear. Have a look at this stuff right here real quick. So what this is, is part of the old long lines microwave system of the Bell system, or AT&T. Uh, these were the older microwave towers that you probably see in, sometimes in movies or in old photos. And we're talking like the 60s here when this stuff was in service. Uh, I see here we have the uh, RF out and RF in. And you have all these cooling fans to keep the stuff cool because it, it generated a lot of heat. These up here are the waveguides. Hopefully you can hear because this is still um, has equipment in it that's running. Here you have uh, the different packs. These are the uh, converters, up converters, and microwave generators kind of old cool stuff these are some of the other circuit packs that help uh, uh, handle the digital stuff and this is all turned down uh, the towers are long gone but you can see that it just sits there and uh, it's common in the telecom industry to um, RIP or rip something and what that means is uh, not rest in peace but retired in place is what that means so it gets retired and it's just left here some more of the same equipment over there Let's go back here. And there's all the waveguides. Uh, basically these empty copper tubes that would have uh, sent the microwave signal out to the towers. So you got a bunch of stuff there. Over here and all the lost that are in this place. Um, this is the air pressure uh, part of the system where I believe this would keep air drier because there's a dryer in the back that I'll show you in a second. Um, inside the microwaves themselves, you'll go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong, but it would just keep, you know, condensation from building up, things like that. So that's what these were. Uh, here's the transmitters, I believe, themselves. So these are the ones that actually generated, I believe, the microwave, the power needed. Again, it's really old. So I'm not really sure if that's what these were doing, but they're still here at one of my sites that I have. And I think it's some of these. Let's see. Radio spare. There's some just old radio spare equipment. Uh, some wiring, other circuitry, relays, transformers, books. Uh, old GE what was a silicon dielectric compound. You know, this place is a museum, much like every telephone office in the country that's fairly old. They're all museums. Here's some test equipment. This would actually generate, I believe, uh, signals so you can test and see. This would be an old oscilloscope type. And there's more of it. And then this is a dummy load. So this is actually if you're trying to put um, a load to test the power coming out amperage-wise. That's what you use here. It's actually kind of cool. So we see these really old-looking buttons here. They're pretty neat. It's really nice quality. This stuff is probably from at least the 70s and it still holds up. Uh, I turned this thing on a few months ago and it powers up. It doesn't do nothing, but it powers up. So here's the microwave test set we were just talking about. I just plug it into power over here. So let's turn this thing on. I'll show you. Oh, look at the signal displays. Fancy that is. Oh, there you go. So in the camera, it looks more kind of blown out here. Um, and actually it's pretty blue. Hide it. There you go. You can change the position of it. Uh, change the gain. See the ghost in the back. Take the intensity down, bring the intensity up. So yeah, this thing still powers up. I don't know how calibrated it is anymore. Why it's great. This thing I believe was made in Japan uh, by this company. Here's the so it changes the other one. Yeah. So everything still works. Thought you'd like to see that. 
in action there. I believe this is more, uh, what is this? This is books and then wiring for this place. And then let's see, this is more radio gear stuff. Uh, so there's a, one of the couplers, more circuit packs, full battery. Gauges, all oh, those are tough. Those are actually kind of useful. Oh, some old Folgers coffee. What was this? What's this coffee in it, too? Huh. And then lip and tea and all that. Uh, more Western Electric stuff. Um, Rockwell valves. And just more stuff. Um, these are spare. I think these are test sets, things like that. With a poor little bat on there. And some more air pressure stuff and more microwave stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and show you the uh, air dryer. So here, this is the generator room. So now we have the old air dryer that used to um, basically take in the air to the towers. So you have tower two, tower one, and it would uh, basically, like it says, dry the air. Uh, so the I believe the wave guides would be nice and dry, low humidity, um, so it doesn't build condensation there. That's the various piping, and that I believe led up to the towers. Uh, but all this stuff obviously is long gone, turned down, not in use. And then uh, the original generator in this building was this big boy right here. This is, I believe, a Detroit diesel. No, no, it's a Hercules. This is a Hercules. Uh, a diesel engine coupled to an AC generator. I believe this was built in 1978 New 78 or maybe a little bit older than that Yeah, that's the big big generator that used to run this plant. It still does run and work uh, This building is used for the purposes now. So the the generator still does run and it runs It runs often this thing. It runs probably about 80 hours to 120 hours a month uh, due to power outages in this area. So it's constantly running and after all these years, it still runs pretty good. Uh, I'll go ahead and take you out back and show you where the towers used to be. And here out back, uh, we don't actually have a combination for this anymore. I believe our real estate people probably do. But here's the old tower pads. Uh, these are where the, the legs of the tower sat. So there's four, right? yeah, there's four. And if you can see right back there, those waveguides that we were talking about, that's where they would come through and they would connect to the waveguides for the tower and then go way up there and feed everything for the microwaves. So, like I said, this technology is no longer in use. It's been replaced by fiber uh, for this long haul type stuff. This was part of the original long line system. And there's actually great websites. Longlines.net is a good site if you want to see everything about the uh, old uh, carrier systems, the L carrier, which was coax. So what would happen is this microwave came first, and then I believe the coax took over after that. And then after coax started kind of going away in the uh, 80s, uh, fiber optics took over, and now it's all fiber for this stuff. But... That is a quick look. Haven't done a video in a long time, at least a long one for you guys. So I thought you'd get a interesting uh, kick out of this. But uh, hey, let me know if you liked it. And if you have any information about, you know, um, microwave technology that you'd like to share, go ahead and do that. So for FDR Retro Tech and Gaming, thank you for watching. Have a great day.